Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today I figured we'd take a look at something that I consider is kind of a neat trick, even though it's not very useful to most people, uh, which is uh, the fact that you can actually boot. G well, you can't boot it, like this, this isn't gonna go anywhere, but you can turn on a GPU with no GPU core, and assuming there's no like PCB defects, the whole thing will actually fire up properly. Um, and the reason why I think this is super neat is because uh, one of the uses I have for dead GPUs is building e-powers out of them. So, uh, basically just stealing the VRM off of a card and then using it to power another card or a motherboard or, or whatever. Like, I, I've, I've used e-powers... <laughs> well, no, like, most of, like, you can just get a really high current, low voltage, you know, VR, like, the power supply, basically, by cutting this part off the, off the card. But the... Annoying thing with doing that is when you cut the card, uh, this stops working, right? Because this right here, typically, this this portion of the card typically requires all of this over here. It doesn't just run off of the off of the the eight pin and the six pin. And so, if you cut the card, and then then you end up having to look up document like data sheets for your controllers and going like, oh, what voltages do I need? Where am I going to get those voltages? It's a real pain, you know. If you want to make sure that all of your phases are running, well, you first need like you first need to get the card to just even start up, uh, and and so it's very annoying as far as I'm concerned to to go through that process uh, that way. And uh, so this is a GTX 780 DirectCU two I got uh, got sent as fan mail. Big thank you to the the guy who sent it over. Unfortunately, the core on it was completely just dead. Um, and so I've removed the core because I, I messed around with it. I got the card to run temporarily and then it would just die again. And I was just like, I'm not dealing with that. And I do have a bunch of cards where it's like, I don't have a VRM for them. So I figured, hey, let's, uh, you know, like, well, actually I just steal cores off of dead GPUs just because I like to collect cores. Because, you know, cores are cool. But uh, also just, it makes it possible to basically just turn this on at this point. I'm not actually... Okay, yeah, well, I haven't checked the, uh, you know what, no, we're, we're going to do a basic pre-flight check, we're going to check that there's no short circuits. As fun as fire is to look at, I don't feel like ha dealing with fire right now. That's kind of low, but should be fine. Um, no, actually, we don't need to check that. Um, oh, that's probably 3.3 .3 volts over there. That's fine. That's fine. Also fine. Yeah, okay, we can we can start this up. And uh, nothing happens. Um, or at least nothing nothing visible happens. You, you, you know, you, you'd think it's not running at this point. One of my cables is getting into one of my fans. There we go. Um, but the thing is, uh, we do have voltage. So if we check, like, this capacitor over here, which is for the memory VRM, we can see we have memory voltage. Um, a whole 1.7 volts of it, because the memory chips aren't actually running. Um, yeah, so we have memory VRM up and running. Do we have core power? We should. That's kind of the whole point of this. Um, and we do indeed. We have vCore, right? We have 0.95 volts, which is the boot-up voltage for this VRM. Um, also what I really like about this DirectCU2 card is it actually comes with, like, a dedicated VRM heatsink that's not attached to the GPU heatsink, because... That means when I cut off the VRM, I don't need to figure out a cooling solution for it. Um, now, the thing I want to know is, like, I suspect that this regulator right here handles 5 volts. So, okay, that's 12 volts in. And we get 5 volts out. So I was right about that. And this is important, because I am 99% sure that this 5-volt regulator is necessary for this chip to run. So what I can do by, you know, having the card started up like this is... Um, before I cut the PCB, I can start working on, like, moving this regulator over there, right? Because this, in this condition, the card always works. So I can desolder the regulator, figure out where to put it over here. I can, like, right now we could probably probe around for a bit, figure out where the 5 volts is, like, present on the card, maybe find an attachment point for... Actually, you would want to do that with the card turned off, that's better. Um, I said turned off... No, don't turn on again, you stupid board. Um, anyway, but what you, so you get the idea. Basically, this allows you to check that the VRM is still, like, f still fully functional without actually having to deal with the fact that there's a GPU attached to it. And if even, like, even a dead GPU, 
um, it's going to pull power. Like It's going to pull quite a bit of power. So you can't just fire up a card like this and sit there going like, ooh. Like if all the voltage rails are running, you, you can't do that. You can't just sit there probing around because uh, eventually it should trip the thermal shutdown, which maybe that's not working. And then you're just going to have a, a you know piece of silicon that's getting steadily hotter and hotter and hotter because you're just shoving power in it while while it's not actually function without actually having a heatsink on it. So basically, this is great for just figuring out does VRM work? What what is necessary for the VRM to work? So um, we found the five volts, um, which is this side of this regulator, and now we're just gonna actually I'm just gonna put this into beep mode. Um, I think yeah. So this uh, the five volts is probably used for driving the VRM because the the component I touched over there, those are some capacitors right by the uh, gate driver. Yeah. The, the gate drivers. Um, so, you know, if I was moving this, I could desolder it over here and probably just like run a wire to, to the one of these gate drivers because I, I don't know how internally this is organized, but there's a decent chance that there's basically a trace or a power plane or something that goes like, and then just goes through all of the power stages on this side of the PCB. So if you power one of them, I mean, all of the, the gate drivers on this side of the PCB. So if you provide power to one of them, it should power all of them up. And if the controller needs five volts, well, it's probably connected to the exact same five volt power source as the as the drivers. So, you know, at this point, I could go move this from here to there and then fire the card up again and see, hey, yes, we do still have the VRM running. So I was correct. This is this is a, a good way to, to provide five volts power. Now, also, we can just steal all of the passive components that it comes with. Um, probably going to end up using some kind of perf board to to actually like uh well connect it because there's there's a lot of empty space over here but nothing to actually solder to uh grab 12 volts from the six pin you know eight pin and the six pin uh, another step is uh disconnecting the 12 volt power supply from the pcie slot because we're not gonna like when you're cutting the vrm uh well actually on nvidia gpus it's standard practice for at least one phase of vcore and one phase of memory to come get power from the PCIe slot. The idea being that you can actually boot NVIDIA GPUs without having the 8-pin and the 6-pin plugged in so that they can give you that error message where it's like, yo, you didn't plug in your power connectors. Uh, so, you know, which we don't, like, it's not really a problem, but if I'm cutting this VRM off, right, like, this is not a problem if, you're, if you have a functional card, but if I'm cutting the VRM off, then one of our phases or even one of our memory phases, like it's not gonna have power anymore. And that's kind of an issue. <laughs> so we need to deal with that. So for that, you could desolder this uh, shunt resistor over here, right? Um, which will disconnect the 12 volt power from, from the PCIe slot from the rest of the card. And then you can just figure out um, how to connect the 12 volt. Actually, on this side of the card, the easiest way to do that, in my opinion, would be to just hook up all of these capacitors together. Just run a wire bit on the back of the card between all of those capacitors because they've got legs. So, and you're gonna have an input filtering capacitor basically for every single power plane. So if you just connect all of them together, it's ev you're eventually gonna get the 12 volt power plane that you wanted. Also, I had a power limit removal mod on this card, but that's <laughs> it's useless. At, at one point I was, I was kind of hopeful that the card wouldn't just up and die again, but then it just up and died again. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> before I could get too far with, with further modifications on it. But uh, yeah, um, I'm probably going to steal this VRM and stick it onto a GTX 1080. Um, that's that's at least what I'm thinking of doing with it. Um, and yeah, and this is just a new procedure I've been sort of messing with for, for building power boards out of cards because in the past, I would cut the VRM first and then worry about why it's not turning on later, right? Whereas with this procedure, it's like I have the VRM, it's running, I can step-by-step step move all of the necessary components for the VRM over to the side of the PCB that I'm actually going to use, and then we can cut it off and I don't have to worry about like, hey, why isn't it running anymore? Because um, that's that's super annoying all the, always, right? Um, also in this, this well, actually for 3.3 volts, you're, you're just going to do that while the card is off. Um, right, because th there's a bunch of things that you're going to be tra like you're we're going to want to trace out while the card isn't running. So, like 3.3 volts. Are we in? Yep. So 3.3 volts. Probably there's a big. No. Does that not run on 3.3 volts? Does this run on 3.3 volts? Am I stupid? Oh. Oh, it's not making proper contact. 
Hmm? No? There should be a capacitor somewhere in this area that's on 3.3 volts. And I'm... Oh, wait. Found one. Yep. So, yeah, because this, this chip... Like, basically... Mo at least, well, okay, no, the, the basic, like the smaller lower phase count voltage controllers, a lot of those will actually often run even off of 12 volts, which is kind of neat. Um, but for the bigger ones, the more advanced ones, which don't necessarily have integrated gate drivers, those will generally run on 3.3 or 5 volts. Um, so that, that's kind of why I was like, yeah, you need to find your 3.3 volts. Because if you don't find your 3.3 volts, this, this thing's not going to turn on. And so, again, you know, what you could do is, like, we have these input filtering inductors for 3.3 volts. You could desolder those, run a wire over to, like, whatever connection point you found for 3.3 volts over on this side of the card. And then you don't have to worry about, like, oh, I'm going to cut this, where's the 3.3 volts going? You're already going to have that sorted out. So, yeah, um... I just thought this was this was kind of kind of neat if if somebody wants to like if you have the equipment for pulling a core which you don't really need to be that equi well equipped to do this. I mean, I use the, you know, hot plate and a hot air station, but before I had the hot plate, I would have used a toaster and with the toaster I can actually get pretty similar results assuming like basically you just need a toaster that eventually like the, the and when I say toaster, I don't mean like an oven toaster. I mean the pop-up style toaster. So you just put the card over the pop-up style toaster and then you just run the toaster until the core comes off. <laughs> That's literally, well, not, don't actually do it that way, but like I'm also doing like hot air from above. So the, the toaster is mostly acting as like generalized heating of the whole PCB so that the, the card isn't cold. The thing is, my toaster will eventually produce air that's like over 200 degrees Celsius and it'll do that pretty quickly. So, yeah, but basically you could do like a, like a pop-up toaster and a heat gun and you should be able to not necessarily get something this clean, but you should certainly be able to pull the core right off of the card because it really, like, this is just a matter of applying enough heat to this general area that all of the solder melts and if you can do that, then you can pull the core off. How you source that heat um, will obviously affect the health of the rest of the PCB, um, but uh, yeah. So it's kind of like, like if you're going to be building power boards, pulling a core, like having a way to pull the core is kind of neat because you can pull the core and then you have like a fully functional VRM. In fact, if you, if you were being like super lazy or you had some low power card, what you could do is you could literally keep the whole card, um, just like not even cut it anymore, right? And just run wires between like the inductor legs and the ground legs of these capacitors. Uh, to whatever it is you're trying to power. Now, the problem with doing it that way is your your the length of the connection between this card and whatever you're trying to power with it is going to probably be really long. And if you're pushing significant amounts of current uh, with large transients, that's going to be garbage in terms of voltage regulation. Um, but yeah, you, you could actually, like, you could use this as a power board in its current condition, right? Like 12 volts and 3.3 volts goes in, V core comes out. It just needs a volt mod. I don't have that part yet. Also, I need to check that all of the phases are running, but that's what the oscilloscope is for. Actually, you can also check the phases are running with a uh, multimeter. Um, if you just have a frequency function that goes into the kilohertz range, you can just check the uh, high voltage side, well, the switch node side of the inductor legs, uh, or just the switch node side of the inductors and, and check if each inductor is actually switching, is actually being switched on and off. Well, th it's not the inductor that's getting switched, but if the MOSFETs connected to that inductor are switching. There, that's what I was trying to say. So, yeah, you can basically... I mean, you could theoretically use this as an e-power as is. It's just really, like, bulky, right? Like, this... Well, you don't need all of this over here. It doesn't really hurt anything by existing, but you don't need it, so it is better... Uh, for just space concerns and like connection length concerns to to cut this off eventually but I don't know if you were powering like a GT 710 you could probably like you could actually probably keep this in one piece if you wanted to um, but uh yeah also this would be like kind of a waste of a really nice 8, fa eight plus 2 phase VRM to, to power a GT 710 with this but uh, yeah anyway uh, I thought this was this was kind of neat um not very practical, but neat. And so I figured I'd do a video about this. And uh, yeah, big thank you to the, the guy who, who sent over the card because uh, 
I have another VRM to use. I have unfortunate, like I actually was sent a card with this VRM once in the past. An idiot me fed 12 volt. Like, it, you know how I just showed you like, oh yeah, you want to figure out where your five volts goes? Yeah, idiot me fed 12 volts into the five volt rail. Actually, no, I think I did something else equally stupid. Like I connected something that was just to completely the wrong thing and blew up multiple drivers on the card before realizing that I like multiple, yeah, blowing up multiple drivers before realizing what I was doing wrong. But anyway, um, yeah, not going to do that again. Cause I now have like, that was back in the day when I would cut the VRM first, figure out how, how it runs later. Well, now we can figure out how the VRM runs first and then cut it <laughs> right. Much better procedure. So, um, yeah, anyway, that is it for the video. Um, thanks for watching, I guess. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with Actually Hardcore Overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. Uh, both Patreon and Teespring help out immensely with running the channel, so it would be much appreciated if you check those out. And uh, yeah, that is it for the video. Thanks for watching, and uh, goodbye. I'm just gonna... Oh, how convenient. The mouse is already on the stop button. Bye.